Our presentation today will cover the background of our project and the former Reed and Barton industrial site, a description of our goals and the research methodology, the context that our investigation of redevelopment possibilities takes place within, case studies we identified and reviewed of other projects with similar conditions, deliverables we have prepared for the town of Norton, and our long-term action plan and recommendations for the redevelopment process. Our project begins with the town of Norton. Norton is located in Southern Massachusetts in Bristol County between Boston and Providence, Rhode Island. The town is rural suburban and has a population of approximately 20,000. Norton has a self-described shortage of commercial development that presents various challenges, including a reliance on residential property tax for revenue, a lack of defining community gathering spaces, lost economic potential, and difficulty attracting young families and workers. The town has, however, recently acquired control of a vacant 16.25 acre former industrial parcel near its downtown, which provides the opportunity to redevelop this space into an asset for the town and the community. The former Reed and Barton manufacturing plant that occupied the parcel closed in 2007, and when the company declared bankruptcy in 2015, the town took over control. Upon inspection, the town discovered several safety and environmental hazards. The Environmental Protection Agency and the Massachusetts Department of Environmental Protection are presently removing contaminated soil and the town has begun demolition of the buildings. The site will ultimately be cleaned and cleared, but it may be designated as a brownfield, the implications of which we will discuss later in this presentation. Norton sought the assistance of our field projects team to help initiate the redevelopment process for the Reed and Barton site and prepare them to conduct a feasibility study. The town wants to use this opportunity to address the challenges it faces and create a project the community can take pride in. The goal of our project is to position Norton staff to initiate a comprehensive redevelopment process and lay the groundwork for a feasibility study. To achieve this goal, we developed four guiding research questions. One, what are the possibilities for redevelopment on a brownfield site? Two, what are the particularities of this site that should be taken into consideration when making recommendations? Three, are there examples of similar successful brownfields cleanups or redevelopment projects in the region that would be informative? Four, how can we ascertain the community's wants and needs and continue to do so despite the global pandemic in order to promote responsible redevelopment? These research questions set our project up to include a strong community engagement process, originally leading our team to plan for an in-person community workshop and outreach campaign at Wheaton College. Yet we have since adopted this plan due to the outbreak of COVID-19 in order to equip the town with the tools that they need in order to conduct this community engagement process when it is feasible. With this adapted vision, we identified four project deliverables. One, produce a set of conceptual rede redevelopment visuals that showcase various development scenarios. Two, build a project website that presents information about the redevelopment process and serves as a tool for conducting outreach and providing updates. Three, design a future community event and provide the town with an agenda and materials for said event. Four, create a redevelopment action plan in order to guide the town towards the process of a feasibility study and lay out next steps and recommendations. With these same guiding questions that Ella just mentioned in mind, we designed research and methodology. We ended up using five total methods to inform our report and recommendations. A literature review, land use, demographic, and environmental data collection, a case study review of four similar sites in Massachusetts and Vermont, a gallery of 3D mass models created in SketchUp and overlaid in Photoshop, and finally, a project website and survey created to replace the community meeting we had originally been for April. We will be going into more detail about each of these methods throughout the presentation. With that, we'll move right along into our next section, Project context. Understanding the context in which the redevelopment will take place was crucial to making fully informed recommendations particularized project setting. First and foremost, you may be asking yourself, what is a brownfield? A brownfield site is, by the EPA's definition, any property whose future is complicated due to pollution and contamination, often because of its past as an industrial and manufacturing site. Reuse or redevelopment of the land is often not possible without efforts to clean up existing pollutants or contaminants. The process for cleaning up the field and deciding who pays for that cleanup depends on the site. 
Often placing responsibility for cleanup on the company is impossible because they are either usually corrupt, as is the case here, or long out of business by the time the need for cleanup becomes apparent. If that's the case, usually the EPA and or a combination of other state agencies will perform the cleanup. Funding for these efforts is usually secured through a combination of state and federal grants. Whether or not there are, whether or not there are use restrictions for brownfield sites, again, depends on the site. However, if a site is successfully cleaned up, there are usually no restrictions. There are numerous examples of former brownfield success stories throughout the East Coast that share similar industrial histories to the Reed and Barton site, and their redevelopment runs the gamut from a state park to mixed-use housing, office, and retail space. And finally, developers are often attracted to brownfield sites because they often already have actions to city utilities, like water, gas, and roadways. These are valuable assets that can make redeveloping a former brownfield site more attractive than starting from scratch with an unused land. While the redevelopment will likely be in the existing footprint, which exempts the site from many environmental laws, the current status of the site means we're not certain of what environmental laws will be applicable to the new development. However, it's worth noting several which may be relevant in the future. The Norton Conservation Commission has a 25-foot setback rule from any water body. While this likely won't impact the main development, it could come into effect for future projects on the site. And if the project is partly funded by a state or federal agency, then the redevelopment may be subject to the Massachusetts and National Environmental Policy Act review processes. But again, this would be conditional. Norton has an age distribution, similar to other rural college towns, with an aging population, but a spike in college-age students. However, it's clear that upon graduation, those students don't stay in Norton. One Wheaton student told our team that a reason why it's difficult for students to stay after graduation is because of the lack of starter homes and affordable housing in, in Norton. The gap in residents aged 25 to 39, as seen in the graph, also highlights Norton's difficulty attracting young families. Job creation is one way to attract new families and is also one of the key goals identified by Norton for the Reed, Reed and Barton redevelopment. Between 2010 and 2017, overall jobs in Norton grew by 10.4%, though circumstances vary greatly by industry, as seen in this figure. To plan job growth strategically, Norton staff will need to further investigate the reasons behind the growth and decline of certain industries and what types of jobs are in demand among Norton residents and statewide. Similar to many suburban communities, Norton experiences clear financial disparities between homeowners and a smaller proportion of renters. In 2017, the median income for owner-occupied households was approximately $111,000, compared to just $56,000 for renter households, which make up about 15% of all households. Many renter households in Norton are also renting above their affordability. Significantly more renters than homeowners are cost burdened, meaning they spend at least 30% of their income on housing, and severely cost burdened, meaning they spend at least 50% of their income on housing. Creating more affordable rental housing is one potential strategy to help alleviate cost burden. The pie chart on the right shows the breakdown of land use types in Norton and highlights the existing challenges it faces with imbalances. The lightest yellow wedge represents residences less than three units, which is just over a third of total land use. Most of this is single family homes. Mixed use, commercial, office, and multifamily which are the uses that Norton is interested in for the Reed and Barton project, are the small slivers in the bottom right, combined accounting for less than 3% of the town's land use. The map on the left shows the existing sidewalk, bike, and transit network around Reed and Barton. Reed and Barton is located less than a mile from the village center, Wheaton College, and two bus stops on the regional Gatra system, but it is not connected to these areas by sidewalks, which are shown in purple on the map. This presents both an access and safety concern for anyone trying to get to the site without a car from these nearby destinations. Without changes, the only option is to walk along the side of the road on Elm Street, which you can see from the picture on the right is a narrow road with a minimal shoulder space. In terms of utility infrastructure, 
The site is not connected to the town sewer system, and if this remains the case, it could limit redevelopment options. However, the town is committed to exploring opportunities to extend the sewer system to service the site. The site is already connected to a gas main and water infrastructure. This map shows the current zoning of the Reed and Barton site and its surrounding areas. Reed and Barton, which is a parcel bordered in orange on the map, is currently zoned industrial, which does not support the mixed uses the town is interested in, so zoning will need to be changed before redevelopment can take place. There are two potential rezoning options. The first is to rezone to Norton's village commercial zoning type, which allows for the desired mixed uses with some special permitting. This type of zoning is common in Norton's existing commercial areas, including some, ni some, some nearby Reed and Barton, as seen in light pink on the map. The second option is to rezone to a proposed village center core district zoning type, which Norton planning staff are currently working on drafting. This zoning would encourage mixed uses and higher density and would stream, streamline the permitting process for a mixed use development faster than village commercial zoning. Next, we will discuss our case study review. The case studies were compiled both as a resource to inform our recommendations and as references for Norton staff to use going forward. We reviewed case studies in four municipalities that are shown on this map. Andover, Mansfield, and Lawrence in Massachusetts, and Bellows Falls in Vermont. Andover and Mansfield are both comparable mixed-use re redevelopments, and Lawrence and Bellows Falls are both brownfield success stories. Like Norton, Andover is a suburban town in the process of redeveloping a former industrial site near its downtown, in their case, the Old Town Yard. The Town Yard site is 3.5 acres and is located within a larger district that was rezoned in 2015 to encourage mixed use, higher density, and pedestrian access. Andover used the outcomes of an extensive community engagement process, placemaking exercises, and a market analysis to create design guidelines for redeveloping the Town Yard and is nearing the step of finding a developer for the project. In an effort to revitalize its downtown and attract young families, the town of Mansfield, which is just north of Norton, created an overlay district that promoted high density mixed use development. Included within this district was a nearly 1.5 acre space consisting primarily of parking lots and dilapidated buildings, one of which is pictured here. In 2017, Redevelopment of the space was completed with 81 new apartments and 7,800 square feet of new retail space. Since completion of the project, Mansfield has seen a growth in its population of young professionals and increased pedestrian activity downtown. As Greg mentioned, Bellows Falls, Vermont and Lawrence, Massachusetts provided Brownfield success stories. Lawrence is a Massachusetts municipality of about seven square miles that consists of 72,000 residents. Lawrence is a former textile mill city in economic decline. Throughout a 15-year community engagement process, the city, along with community groups and local and state organizing, developed an emerald green greenway along the Spigot River, a natural asset to the city that has been depleted throughout the years. The Spigot River Revitalization Project is labeled as an EPA success story and is useful to our project as a former mill site in Massachusetts that has been repurposed. Bellows Falls is similar to Norton as a predominantly residential town where the Robertson paper mill operated for several generations until it went bankrupt in the 1980s. The Robertson paper mill site, also praised as an EPA success story, has been successfully cleaned up and awaits commercial redevelopment. Next, we will discuss our deliverables. These deliverables are tangible and immediate tools for the town of Norton to use when they are able to initiate the community engagement element of the Reed and Barton redevelopment project. When creating redevelopment concept models, we worked in both GIS and SketchUp. Starting with GIS, we worked with SERPID, or the Southeastern Regional Economic and Planning Development District, who had worked with MassGIS in creating zoning maps and maps with demographic data for the town of Norton. We took this spatial data and created base maps in GIS with outlines of the parcels surrounding the Reed and Barton area and imported these maps into SketchUp. In SketchUp, we created four main massing models that showcase the potential of the Reed and Barton site and allow for the public to imagine what a potential redevelopment might begin to look like. These models consisted of three mixed use concepts and one purely commercial concept. Once created, we overlaid the models into a Google Maps image of the site through Photoshop in order to provide visual context. And we provided multiple views of each model. Here's an example of one of the mixed use redevelopment massing models. As you can see, the potential commercial space is coded in red, the residential is coded in yellow, the flexible space for community gathering, outdoor seating, or pathways is coded in gray, and open space is green. 
Now for the project website. Uh, this website was our primary adaptation to the restrictions put in place by COVID-19 and it allows the Norton community to engage in a number of ways with the project while they wait for it to be safe to resume traditional community meetings. It's technically a Tufts WordPress site, but we plan to turn over the content to the town to let them use it as they please, whether they want to just create their own site using some of this material or continue to use this version. It should be around so long as the administrators of the site are Tufts students, so at least another year. The Qualtrics survey we use to gauge community interest is also accessible through the website. We'll show you the homepage quickly, as you're probably seeing right now, um, but for the sake of time, we encourage you to visit and interact with its various features on your own time. Um, as our final deliverable, we plan to give the town the presentation materials we would have used if our April 2nd meeting had occurred as originally planned. First, we will provide Norton with a slideshow, slideshow presentation and notes to use and alter as needed when they hold the workshop. The presentation is designed to take roughly 15 to 20 minutes and to be given at the beginning of the workshop. Then, after the presentation, the event is designed to convert into an open house style workshop during which participants are able to engage with town staff and interactive materials at their own pace and interest. Some of the recommended workshop stations include interactive concept site models, small group discussion tables with staff, large notepads with broad how might we prompts that ask participants questions like, how might we make this site an attractive destination? Or how might we use this redevelopment opportunity to meet community needs? And personal site visioning which involves drawing individual visions for the site on trace paper over an underlying parcel map. We actually got this idea from the Serpid master plan meeting a couple of us attended back in early March. These pictures were taken during that meeting and show how these more creative, interactive methods can be useful for gathering data. And they're also fun for the participants. So here these pictures show um, on the left, a map of Norton where people could place stickers saying that they liked something, they didn't like something, they were concerned about it. Um, there's a key to the stickers on the right, that big picture. And then in the middle, that's actually the trace paper over a, a map of Norton as well. Um, and people just markers to color in what they thought um, change in the existing town zoning. So right here, someone had colored in box to indicate that they wanted commercial in that site or in that parcel instead of what's there now. Um, and so with that, we're ready to move on to the action plan. The action plan is the culmination of our research and lays out long-term strategies and recommendations for Norton to conduct its feasibility study and redevelopment process for the Reed and Barton site. The action plan is comprised of three main sections. The first addresses how to design effective community engagement. The second addresses considerations for brownfield redevelopment. And the third addresses major steps for the feasibility study and redevelopment process. We identified five foundational elements for the Reed and Barton Project's long-term community engagement process. First, communicate the purpose. Norton's main goals for the community engagement process are to inform the public about the town's needs and motivations gather information about community preferences and concerns, and generate feedback to improve proposals. To get buy-in and establish legitimacy, the town needs to be upfront and transparent about the purpose of the process and how members of the community will influence its outcomes. Second, promote inclusivity. Equally important to clarifying the purpose of the community process is thinking about who participates in it. To ensure that all voices are being heard, Norton should incorporate targeted recruitment strategies and make concerted efforts to encourage inclusive and representative participation. This includes expanding project advertising and information sharing to reach new audiences, optimizing accessibility so that all can participate, and conducting outreach aimed specifically at less represented groups. Third, establish community leadership. Harnessing and using community leadership will be crucial to the success of community engagement and the project overall. Norton staff should make it a priority to identify and engage directly with possible community champions, whether they be individuals or groups who have influence in the community and can garner support and buy-in for the Reed and Barton project. Fourth, utilize technology. We also recommend that Norton make use of technologies that can enhance communication and information sharing. Especially given the uncertain timeline for in-person events due to COVID-19, the use of online engagement resources is extremely valuable. At the same time, it's important to acknowledge the limits that many members of the community may have to access and use technology. So it should be used as one tool among many others. 
And finally, evaluate and follow up. Norton should plan to have an organized structure of evaluating and following up on community engagement. Developing measures to evaluate community participation will help staff categorize and analyze feedback, identify what is and is not working effectively, and implement changes to enhance the process. Reporting back to the community in a consistent and clear way about the outcome of events and why decisions were made is important for maintaining trust and legitimacy and for keeping people engaged. Also in the action plan is a section laying out benefits of redeveloping brownfields. The Reed and Barton site is contaminated and has a legacy of environmental damage. But after the site is cleaned, the new development offers a chance to use green design and generally create something which benefits both the community and the environment. The site as it is, is a public hazard, but the new development can utilize green and open space to incentivize recreation and physical activity. Brownfields tend to decrease the land values of the surrounding areas, and a new development could also raise surrounding home values anywhere between five and 15%. Currently, the site offers no financial benefit to the town. But after its redevelopment, the site will increase tax revenue the town takes in, which may help the town balance their revenue sources. Lastly, we outline recommendations and resources for major steps of the feasibility study and redevelopment process. This included potential funding resources applicable to different elements of the project. We recommend that Norton identify early in the, pro in the project uh, what it may need additional funding for and explore these avenues. Creating an advisory working group made up of members of the public and key stakeholders and local experts who meet regularly to guide the process and provide thoughtful feedback. Conducting a market analysis to determine the demand and economic feasibility of different residential, retail, and office possibilities for site redevelopment, including affordable housing. Changing zoning to support mixed use development, either to village commercial zoning or the proposed village center core district zoning. Conducting assessments and studies to measure site capacity and redevelopment impacts, including a traffic impact assessment, a parking demand analysis, sewer and water utility assessments, and an environmental impact study. Developing design principles that support town goals and guide redevelopment proposals, such as increasing access to the site's natural amenities and creating spaces for people to gather. Exploring options for improving access to the Reed and Barton site, such as expanding the town sidewalk and bike networks. And finally, the outcomes of these steps will culminate in the creation of a request for proposals from developers. We recommend that Norton consider soliciting proposals from and prioritizing local developers to support jobs and money in the local economy. This process has not and will not be without challenges. The pandemic has made community outreach much more difficult and while it's hard to measure the long-term impact of the pandemic on this project, the project working group established in the action plan can better deal with these implications in the future. For now, as cost of living continues to push people further from Boston, towns like Norton can take advantage of sites like this in order to attract these young professionals and young families and recent graduates, while also increasing much needed tax revenue for the town government. This project is just one step in Norton's journey to its bright future, but it's a big step. And hopefully with the help of the materials provided, that step is made just a little bit easier. Thank you for listening.